Welcome to this exploration of George Washington's early life and education. Born into the world on a cold February day in 1732, in the verdant landscapes of Westmoreland County, Virginia, George was destined for greatness. His family, the Washingtons, were a respected clan, their words carrying weight in the influential circles of colonial Virginia. But George's path was not always clear. At the tender age of 11, he found himself shouldering the burdens of adulthood far sooner than his peers when his father, Augustine Washington, passed away. This pivotal event shaped George, instilling in him a sense of duty and responsibility that would carry through his life. His education, though brief and largely informal, was influenced by practical interests such as surveying and the intellectual stimuli provided by the Fairfax family's library. Every experience, every influence was a thread in the tapestry of the man who would become America's first president. So, let's delve into the early years of America's first president. George Washington was born on February 22, 1732, in Westmoreland County, Virginia. The first son of Mary Ball and Augustine Washington, George was born into a family of middling gentry in colonial Virginia. The Washingtons were a respected family, owning a sizable plantation and several slaves, and they enjoyed a comfortable, if not lavish, lifestyle. Augustine Washington was a prominent figure in the community, serving in various public roles, including justice of the peace and church warden. His influence would have undoubtedly provided young George with a glimpse into the workings of local governance and societal structures. The Washington family was also closely connected to the influential Fairfax family, which would later play a significant role in shaping George's life. However, life took a sudden turn when George was only 11 years old. His father, Augustine, passed away, leaving young George without the guidance and support a boy of his age would need. This event marked a significant shift in George's life. With his father's passing, George inherited the family's ferry farm near Fredericksburg. While his older half-brothers inherited more substantial properties, George was left with a moderately successful plantation and the responsibility that came with it. The death of his father also ended any prospects of George receiving an education in England, a privilege his two older half-brothers had enjoyed. He was instead educated in colonial Virginia, largely self-taught with a little formal schooling. As a young boy, George was suddenly thrust into the world of adults, bearing responsibilities that might have seemed overwhelming. Yet, these early experiences would shape him, ingraining in him values of diligence, resilience, and integrity. He would learn to navigate the complexities of managing a plantation, understanding the nuances of leadership, and the importance of hard work. This early loss would force young George to take on responsibilities beyond his years, but it would also set the stage for the emergence of a leader who would one day play an instrumental role in the founding of a new nation. Despite the limited formal education available to him, George Washington found ways to expand his knowledge. In a world where formal education was not the norm, young Washington took a path less traveled. His education may have been informal, but it was no less effective, and it is within this context that we see George's interest in surveying emerge. Surveying was a practical skill, but it was also a valuable one. Land was a significant source of wealth in colonial Virginia, and the ability to accurately measure and map it was highly sought after. At just 16 years old, George Washington was appointed official surveyor of Culpeper County, a testament to his aptitude for the craft. This experience gave him intimate knowledge of the Virginia frontier, a useful asset as he navigated the political and military arenas of his future. But it wasn't just the practical skills that surveying offered, it was also a window into broader intellectual pursuits. Indeed, the precision, patience and attention to detail required in surveying were qualities that would come to define Washington's approach to leadership. While his interest in surveying was self-driven, Washington was not without influences. In the 1750s he crossed paths with two figures who would significantly impact his intellectual development, Lord Fairfax and his son George William Fairfax. Lord Fairfax was an English nobleman who owned an immense amount of land in Virginia, he recognized Washington's talent for surveying and hired him to survey his lands. This job not only provided Washington with financial stability, but also exposed him to the lifestyles and intellectual circles of the colonial elite. George William Fairfax, on the other hand, was closer to Washington's age, and they quickly formed a close friendship. The Fairfax's library was a treasure trove of knowledge, and George William encouraged Washington's curiosity. Together, they explored volumes on agriculture, military science, and philosophy. 
This exposure to a wide array of subjects broadened Washington's intellectual horizons and helped him develop a more sophisticated worldview. So, while Washington's formal education may have been limited, his intellectual growth was not. His interest in surveying, coupled with the influences of Lord Fairfax and George William, provided him with a unique and effective education. He learned practical skills, but he also gained a broad understanding of the world, which would serve him well in his future endeavors. In many ways Washington's educational journey is a testament to the power of curiosity and self-driven learning. It is a reminder that education is not confined to classrooms and textbooks, but can be found in the experiences we have, the skills we learn and the people we meet. These experiences would play a significant role in shaping Washington's character and worldview. As we will see, the skills and knowledge gained during this period of his life would provide a solid foundation for his future leadership. But that, dear listeners, is a story for another time. George Washington's military career began with the French and Indian War. This conflict, lasting from 1754 to 1763, was a pivotal moment not just in North American history, but also in the personal journey of Washington. As a young man of 22, Washington found himself thrust into the harsh realities of frontier warfare. His first taste of military action came in 1754, when he led a group of colonial militia to establish an outpost at the forks of the Ohio River, a strategic location contested by both the French and British empires. What followed was a clash with French forces, an event that essentially sparked the French and Indian War. Washington's early military experiences were a mix of failure and success. His first major command at the Battle of Fort Necessity ended in a surrender to the French, yet rather than being disheartened, these experiences fueled his determination to learn and improve. In the subsequent years Washington served as an aide to British General Edward Braddock. He observed and learned from the successes and failures of British military tactics. His courage and resilience during Braddock's disastrous defeat in 1755 were noted by his contemporaries, earning him a reputation for bravery. By the end of the war in 1763, Washington had risen to the rank of colonel, commanding the entire Virginia regiment. His exposure to the realities of war and the demands of leadership had a profound impact. He learned valuable lessons about strategy, diplomacy, and alliance building all of which would prove critical in his future role as Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Army during the American Revolution. But perhaps the most significant outcome of the French and Indian War for Washington was the perspective it offered. He witnessed firsthand the might of the British Empire and its difficulties in managing a vast, diverse continent. This experience likely shaped his evolving views on colonial governance and autonomy, setting the stage for his future political beliefs. Washington's military experiences would prove pivotal in his future leadership roles. They shaped him as a leader, tested his mettle, and laid the groundwork for the pivotal role he would play in the birth of a new nation. Despite his family's prominence Washington faced financial challenges in his early adulthood. His journey was not one of seamless prosperity. In the mid-1750s despite his family's standing, Washington found himself grappling with financial instability. This period of hardship was a crucible testing and ultimately strengthening his grit and determination. Around the same time Washington's half-brother Lawrence passed away. This event thrust upon him the responsibility of managing Mount Vernon, their family plantation. With this obligation, Washington had to balance the rigorous demands of plantation life with his personal aspirations, a task he tackled with remarkable resolve. His financial struggles and the weight of family responsibilities could have broken a lesser man. But for Washington they were stepping stones, forging him into a figure of resilience and resourcefulness. These experiences and the lessons learned from them were integral in shaping the leader he would become. These experiences further shaped Washington's resolve and resourcefulness. The experiences of Washington's early life significantly shaped his character. As we've journeyed through the nascent stages of Washington's life, we've seen how each chapter, each adventure, each hardship, left an indelible imprint on this young Virginian. From the loss of his father, necessitating an early leap into responsibility, to his foray into the practical world of surveying, these experiences honed his resilience, his pragmatism, and his leadership. His limited formal education, contrary to diminishing his prospects, ignited a lifelong passion for learning, nurtured by mentors like the Fairfaxes. In the crucible of the French and Indian War, his military acumen was forged, setting a precedent for his later pivotal role in the Revolutionary War. 
and through financial struggles and family responsibilities, he cultivated an understanding of the complexities of economic and social systems. These formative years set the stage for Washington's future role as a founding father of America. As we've seen, Washington's early life and education were marked by unique challenges and experiences. His journey from a young Virginian with limited formal education to a military leader and eventually the nation's first president is truly remarkable. His experiences from surveying to managing Mount Vernon not only shaped him, but also the country he helped to found. There is so much more to explore about Washington's upbringing, so don't hesitate to dive deeper. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the early life of America's first president.